wanted to find out how long the period that was for. You look at the $38,000 one? Uh, 36 8853 There's also a subsequent check um, on the same date for $17,532. Yeah. So yes, I believe one is for the property insurance, which is an annual for 2019, and the other lesser amount is for the health insurance. Okay, so we're paying roughly $37,000 a year for, for liability insurance? Yes. Any further questions or discussion on the bills for the month? I ask for a motion to ratify the, the bills paid during the prior month. Yeah, I make that motion. Uh, motion is there a second? Well, second. And uh, because we can, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> all right. Thank you. Rub it in. I know. I'm sorry. Yeah. Rub it in. <laughs> Okay, for Westland Ambulance District, we have the approval of tra the transaction list on pages 18 and 19 of our packet. Um, and after we get done with this approval, we'll go back and have a review of the, of the financials for both districts. Do that. I'll make a motion to approve the, the transaction list as presented. Okay. Now second. Here we have a motion and a second. Discussion or any items that anybody wants to discuss? Okay, then uh, roll call vote, please. Director Yesney? Yes. Director Wynn? Yes. Director Farnsworth? Yes. Director Russell? Yes. And Director Childs? Yes. And do you, do you want to go over the financials? Sure, thank you. I have some follow up items with Western Lane. Uh, the patient accounts receivable, account number 1201 on the balance sheet has been updated. Good job. And I have presented in the packet a pie chart, which has been created for the payer type breakdown. Thank you. Is that what you were asking for? Right. The only question, I guess, on the pie chart would be under Medicare. Does that include um, Medicare Advantage as well? I mean, all the Medicare or just straight Medicare? I believe it's Medicare all Medicare. Advantage. Okay. Because I'm pleased with the insurance. is higher than I thought it would be. Yeah. So that's really good. Mm -hmm. And then looking at the PERS expense, uh, the operations is at eighty percent of budget. So we're anticipating a sixty-three thousand contingency transfer next month when we do a. Uh, we're not going to do a supplemental budget for Western Lane. We're actually going to do appropriations transfers. We don't need to do a supplementary budget because we're not changing the bottom line. We're just moving from one category to another. So Western Lane is going to have some transfers to get the budget to match the new charter accounts and to transfer contingency uh, for PERS. And there's going to be a split. Both, both districts will have a, um, a split transfer, well, 50% to transfer for the overlap in the chief wages and benefits. And we're still working on the contractual write-offs uh, to the life med. We did not get to that, so hopefully I'll have that for you next month. You also, Western Lane directors, received the updated um, audited financial report from Chris Mark. And Chris was here a couple weeks ago. We worked a couple of days on audit journal entries, uh, discussed some of the recommendations for internal control, and corrected some errors. Uh, we also had a conference call with Mike at Systems Design to work on these items that I just talked about, the breakdown, and they're sending us monthly reports now where I can keep those updated each month. Also, Kathy Taylor was here. This basically goes for both both boards, um, you know, with Chris's visit. And uh, Kathy was here last week, and we worked on reconciling the financials to agree with the audit reports. And as I said, that there would be for Western Lane, there would be a supplemental budget. And in my report, I said coming in April or May, but I'm already working on them now, so expect those in April. So Saisal Valley will have a supplementary budget, um, and the only difference really between the two is because we will be 
changing the bottom line to accept that special district safety and security grant for only about five thousand but that changes the, the bottom line of the dollar amount for the budget so that needs to be a supplementary budget but for both no public hearing is required i think that's everything i had on my list actually the financials are looking good um, eight months into the fiscal year, we should be tracking at around 66.72% of budget. Um, everything's looking good except for those items that we'll need to transfer contingency for. Question um, for our financials. So there is a, a budgeted line item for a reserve for capital of 210000 Is that formally get moved into capital reserve? Or is that well, those are the two uh, savings accounts that we have for 105000 each. That's the, so the fund is the carryover from the prior. Right. Thank you for uh, following up on those two items, too. <clears throat> Do you know, um, I don't know if you talked to Kathy or to uh, Chris about the accounts receivable, but are we reserving against that a certain percentage against the receivable balance? Like, do we expect to collect 30% of the accounts receivable and book a, you know, we have an allowance from that debt and allowance for contractual, or we, have we adjusted those at all? I am not sure. I'll have okay. to get back to you on that. Okay. Any other questions or thoughts on the financials? I do have one question. Uh, there's a line item for Benton County uh, Public Work. It's for maintenance? That's for the vehicle maintenance. Okay. Very good. You know, that's through February too, right? So we collect, do we collect that second tax batch in February? I mean, is it mostly collected out now? You know, they... I just posted uh, a deposit for both districts on March 14th. Okay, so we're still getting taxed. So it's revenue. not on the February financials. It'll be, It'll be in March. March. Okay, great. <clears throat> I have one question. When you change the page of account receivable on our balance sheet, you added a couple of line items for allowance for bad debt, but allowance for contractual adjustment. And uh, well, I those, those. Are, are those moving target, do they stay the same all year long? You know, those, were, those were a result of the audit journal entries, okay. so I need to get back to you on that. Okay. I'd like to see that. Yeah. Any questions from the Sykes La Valley Fire Board on financials presentation? same 
again, it's not additional funds or any of that. It just cleans up, up some of the language. And then we also have the addendum B, Bravo. The addendum A is the job description. So B, Bravo, it includes um, salary benefits that were originally negotiated. One of the items that is not included on there, and I'm make sure everyone was aware of, um, was a $5,000 um, reimbursement for moving expenses. So I wanted to make sure that that was clear, that it was included, but it is not written in here due to my negligence of not writing it in originally on here. But all that is, has been done, and um, I don't know if there's any questions on where we've been, what we've been doing with the process or not. Just a question on more formality, the fact that it's not been materially altered, but does the Sykes Valley Fire and Rescue Board need to approve this agreement? It, since it's new, it may be, be worth to go ahead and say, yep, this is yeah. what we want to agree to. And then if that happens, then you probably go ahead and sign it and get everything formalized. Okay, well, let's uh, first, from a discussion standpoint, it's in the packet. Hopefully, you've got a chance to look at it. <coughs> Question uh, I think Chief Abel did a good job of explaining the, the reason for the modifications. Um, and I, I would ask for any advisory discussion, too, from Western Lane Act. I think our understanding is substantially the same. Yeah. It's just format changes, wording, language. Okay. So, could you clarify the being expensive? I'm not sure what you meant. Are you talking about the additional expense? Yeah, I mean, is, is the moving expense, is it in or is it out? It, it is not included due to my commission in the, um, the contract or the addendum, but it was something that was originally negotiated. Okay, so if we if we approve this, we're asking us to make that addition as well. That would be correct. Right. Well, then I will ask uh, our motion from Science Level Valley Fire Board to approve the amended employment agreement for Michael Schick. I would make that motion. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. Second. Thank you. Welcome back. Uh, we need, do you need to include the $5,000? Yeah, so the yeah. copy that's, that's here today, does it, is it included? That, this is not included. Um, one of the original discussions that we had is rather than sending it back and forth is to make everyone aware that that was something that was, was promised to be a $5,000 check that will be okay. um, distributed. Well, we can acknowledge that, I think, during the board course of his approval. So we have a motion and second to approve the amended employment agreement. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? <coughs> All right. Well, I think then officially, uh, Michael, the background checks are satisfied. Your psychological profile is satisfied. We approve the employment agreement. So I will gladly execute this tonight with you and welcome to Western Line Ambulance Fire District and Sykes Love Valley Fire and Rescue. Thank you. We really appreciate that. And Diane and I are looking forward to making this our home. Yeah, and welcome to Diane. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we'll do that at the end of the evening, but uh, thank you. Okay. You did tell her that she had to be on call for you sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> I think that is in the agreement. <laughs> spousal she turnouts. Is used to that. <laughs> okay, so the second uh, old business is to discuss the uh, recommendation at the last joint meeting about having future uh, joint meetings between the boards. We uh, decided to have a joint meeting again tonight. I don't know if we need to spend very much time on this, but I guess I'd ask our board, is there any objection to having joint meetings going forward? Yeah. Okay. So we'll turn it over to you. I think we're, we're good. Okay. I don't think we need to vote. Okay, great. Um, <coughs> the, the discussion was too, I think, that, that uh, Dina had mentioned that the preparation of all this might want to push the fourth week. Is that correct? So we're looking at Wednesday or Thursday? Thursday, I believe. Director Webb, did you say there are no Fourth Wednesday is there are no So the fourth Thursday okay. was when we recommend. So we will then uh, declare, unless there's any concern on our board, that uh, the meeting will be April 25th, fourth Thursday, 6 p.m. Same bad channel. So are we looking to do that Thursdays then? Yes, I think here on now will be the fourth Thursday. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Absolutely. Just in the 
I don't think that requires a phone. I think we just all yeah, it's a great idea. idea. We, we just need to change our noticing and so forth, um, the website and so forth, so the public knows what we might be. Okay, very good. All right, uh, we'll get on the staff reports. Chief, you want to jump in there? I can. <clears throat> I already did the first part on the employment agreement that we've been working on. I'm starting on our budget preparation project, so we'll be ready for the budget committee meetings and discussing that coming up here fairly quickly. Um, I would like to mention a little bit on, on the budget preparation. Um, I think Gina probably has this also in her report that Chris Marr was here and went over and made journal entries and Kathy was here and things were not matching up. Um, and dealt with how things were getting switched around. I want to make it clear it's not, things were not matching up because of money or anything. It was matching up with the line items. So Kathy and Gina spent two days going back to the June 30th balances and then bringing everything out there. A lot of um, journal entries that the auditor had made, um, I'm going to say an error, and just set everything off. And so we went back. I, actually, Kathy originally said, I can't deal with this because uh, they're just getting the conflicting information. We got brought in and talked and said, we need this stuff to balance out with our bank accounts and the best that we actually have. And basically, go ahead for Kathy to adjust working with Dean of the books so it is a true reflection of what we have. Western Lane's um, audit is the personal services contract is up. And my recommendation for Sysaw Valley is that we also show, shop for a common auditor um, that can work with Kathy, can work with Dina. Um, I, I can tell you I was not real impressed with the GASB 75 that was left out of both of the audits and had to go back. And um, I think we need to continue to look. So I think you probably have more on that. We did have at the VFW City Hall on this last Monday honoring Chris Martin's paramedic of the year and Tony Miller's <coughs> fire of the year. And that was uh, a good honor. Um, so we have that. They both contribute greatly to our community and our organizations. The last um, I really have is just keeping in the one team concept. We do have the combined fire district and ambulance district awards recognition at Driftwood Shores on Saturday evening, April 13th. Again, board members and their guests are definitely invited. 1920s speak easy and a good opportunity to recognize our staff and volunteers. So looking forward to a good evening down there. That's really all I have. Um, I was going to talk about the EMT testing, but we have our two division chiefs back that were in Lane County, um, Eugene today, monitoring some retests that were going on. Um, just wanted to make sure that everything was on the up and up and getting our folks, our EMTs have gone through the training, gone through everything here that the can in fact get certified as emergency medical technicians. So that was going to be my why they weren't here. They got back fairly quickly. That's all I have on my report. It's fairly short this time. So there's a question. Yeah, I've got a question regarding the uh, <clears throat> the error with the auditor um, that cost us time and effort. Um, is there? I mean, if I take my no, no offense, Tony, but if I bring my car into Tony's place and he makes it worse. Um, I'm going to bring it back, and he's going to fix it because he has a lot of So my question is whether or not, is there any recourse? Yeah, no. any recourse on this financially? We, or? we didn't do anything with Sites of Alley Fires um, because it was, did not raise the level of materiality mm -hmm. there, so we just said, let's not worry about that one. We sent uh, Western Lanes back, and there was a discussion at that particular meeting on whether or not it should go back and just be done. And what Chris's comment was, is the additional work it takes to go back and now include that, so he was going to bill for that. <laughs> that was on the Western Lane. Yes, I'll do it to charge you. Uh, <clears throat> I, I believe we agreed to do that. We did. We, did. So. we did. No, my, my disappointment was that he had the ASPE 75 um, reports for both districts, and they did not get included in the audit. That was the same time that we were here um, on the fire district side that we it was here like 15 minutes and needed to get to Charleston to do there. So we didn't really get a good chance to discuss items mm -hmm. on there. I mean, 
because we have one of the districts um, audit needs to be need to find an auditor there. It seems easier, I think, to have one auditor doing both districts. Actually, all three of the districts. So that's what we're working on. With that. I did mention also I am working on the IGA and getting that ready to go off for to Christy Monson and try to have it somewhat generic so it sets up that third entity or intergovernmental agency that is flexible so we can use, much like lane fire authorities, addendums to add items in or take things out as we need. So that's another way as well. Do you have enough red ink in your printer? <laughs> <laughs> I'll try to do better. <laughs> be a line item on the budget. <laughs> no one comment. I'm not sure that we really stated, I'm sure everybody knows, but restating the financials are now an unqualified, <clears throat> unqualified opinion. So probably for the record, we should state that. That's just great. Yeah. So. Any other questions from our board or chief? Okay. Any questions on the Western Lane side? No. Okay. See, so I think our ops chief Matt's here and Pearson. Here. Who wants to go first? He's not the one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll keep it as brief as possible. Uh, 51 calls for February puts us on 90 for the year. We're right on par where we were at last year. Uh, zero fire property loss as of this point. Uh, that's going to change in the next report. We had a little bit of damage. Average number of firefighters 11. Uh, we've come up from nine from last year, and our response time has dropped out a little bit. We're doing good there. Uh, your call totals and percentages are up on the, the next page. Changing our peak time a little bit, Saturdays at noon instead of Saturdays at 1400, and Wednesday and Tuesday from noon and then also at 6.30. Uh, training's been really busy. Uh, we've got an academy going on right now as well as finishing up in the EMT class. Uh, just a lot going on uh, we've been doing quite a few classes. Uh, we've been doing a driver operator class as well as the academy going on right now. Prevention, as always, super busy. Uh, what's going to keep Captain Miller really busy this week and the rest of this month probably is getting back into elementary, middle, and high schools, but aren't making sure they're all complete there. Working closely with State Fire Marshal. Uh, Captain Miller's coming along very well and doing excellent. Uh, recruitment and retention. Uh, we had a little bit of shuffling this last month due to the uh, fire chief processing. Uh, couldn't have movie night. So, uh, for facilities, uh, fire station one, the uh, other resident bathroom is now complete. Uh, should be getting the bills in on that soon. Uh, equipment going through well. We are looking at some bids for four gas monitors and bunker gear currently. You will notice there's a lengthy apparatus repair. Uh, we're into that season and just getting stuff, making sure it's running good for the folks. And then through the EMT class, I will let Matt cover most of that through his report. If there is anything else, there's the staff reports. Any questions? Thank you, none on this side. Thank you. Okay. Matt, you're up. <clears throat> I don't hold flies very well. I want to make sure Dick can hear me okay. <laughs> uh, February call volume is pretty consistent through 2018. We're a slight dip, but there's only like 15 calls. Uh, included our train report, vehicle fleet manager report, and the community support team report that we've been added so that way we can show the value of having the community support team that we equally share between districts. Uh, touch base on mobile integrated healthcare. Wendy is fully active now, and she is seeing more and more patients that we've bridged the gap with Peace Health. We had that run in Snafu, where now we have that Epic system, which is the main computer software system, and it's up and running. She's got schedules, and it's good to see her out and seeing patients. Uh, touch base on the EMT class, we have 9% pass rate. Uh, there's only one individual left that has to go and retest, and we have that all planned out, so I imagine by the end of April, we'll have 100% pass rate for the EMT class. A lot of effort, the kids did great, the staff did great, really pleased with the outcome. Um, entertain any questions? I'm trying to keep it brief as well. There was something on the transaction report regarding Benton County maintenance. 
Can you just elaborate as to what that is? So Benton County Maintenance is where we actually have all our medic units serviced for higher needs. Brian and Automotive does our mainly daily routine services, lube oil filter. Mm -hmm. However, if an inverter goes out, uh, something that requires higher maintenance, and we go to them, they're more qualified, and they do a lot of county vehicles as well as EMS vehicles. Since we transitioned to Lincoln County, I think it was like mm -hmm. two years ago, we have not had the problems that we did historically of running into vendors, possibility me mechanics not being able to fix it. So very pleased with the outcome. Why you're seeing the increase is probably in the annuals that we did. And each annual is about $1,000 when we do a medic unit annual. And that has to be done when we do our state inspections. Now, they also provide transportation of the vehicle back and forth. Yep. So we don't have to tie up a person doing Exactly. That. I have a question for Matt. Um, is there any process that we can put in place to um, train or have mentoring with a part time or somebody in the MIH program to back up Kathy? Well, currently, the way that we set the model up, Chris does help back up and help me program management because of all the programs we actually have going on. Um, with the fact of sustainability that we're trying to show that we can sustain the program, we're still waiting to get more data to prove that. When we can actually show that sustainability with Peace Health, I would forecast that we would look at either another employee or a part-time employee supplement. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Matt. Okay, you have your office manager report. Thank you. Well, Chief kind of described the situation with between Chris and Kathy, and I don't really know what else to say other than it was a little awkward. But I think we've got things uh, going in the right direction, and uh, I've got the I'm preparing an RFP to go out. We've got some names for uh, several auditors, and I might even check with the Secretary of State to get some names and get RFPs out there, and so. And you know, I have, uh, outside of the meeting, I have two names to recommend. All right. They may already be on your list, but they perform municipal audits. Okay, great, thank you. Um, in addition to that, uh, we have some health insurance rate increase, the projection, uh, all the districts did vote. There were, as I told you on the previous meeting, there was like five options, and it was overwhelmingly the choice to choose option five, which will change it from being one provider for health, dental, uh, pharmacy, and vision to separate companies. But it's also, if we stayed with the same provider, it would be an 11% increase. And now with this vote of choosing option five, it will be only a 5% increase uh, on health insurance. You also in your packet have a uh, letter from Jeff Griffin from WHA, and basically the summary there is they are projecting a 7% in overall increase for property and casualty. You'll see that on page two for next year. The good news is there was no payroll errors in February for either district. Congratulations. Thank you. Nice work. And thank you to Holly and Mary for getting all the uh, payroll input. And lastly, I just wanted to mention that Holly and Mary and I will be attending the Oregon Fire Service Office Administrators Spring Conference in Albany the third week of April. And they do their spring conference and fall conference the third week of the month. And that would be something that we would like to attend. And so. Thank you for putting the board meetings to the fourth week. That's another good reason to do that. And that's all I have. Okay. Um, with respect to sites, Love Valley Fire and Rescue, I don't think there was, there was a formal vote, but I think we can formally acknowledge that we received the, the resignation notice of Director Woody Woodbury, which I believe is position five for our district. Uh, his term was set to expire June 30th, but for reasons personal to him, he chose to resign. So we received that, I believe, Sunday, is that correct? Received yeah. the signed letter on Monday. On Monday, okay. Um, again, just the acknowledgement. Uh, with that, I think, uh, given the work that's going on and the effort, honestly, with budget and process, 
Uh, I'd like to actually make a nomination for an interim director for Cyrus Law Valley Fire and Rescue that would require board approval. And, um, but I view as Alan Burns would be a great candidate for an interim position. Um, I'm not sure everyone knows Alan, former city councilor, former mayor, uh, long time small business owner in this community, and a very active person. So uh, with that, I would again make the motion that we have uh, choose Alan Burns as interim director for position five. Second? Yeah. Okay. So I, there is a motion on the table. There is a second. So I'm going to call for a vote uh, via roll call, please, to appoint Alan Burns as interim director for position five through June 30th, 2018. Director Nixon? Yes. Director Phillips? Yes. Director Green? Yes. Director Carnahan? Yes. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I'll reach out to Alan, I may just look for some guidance from uh, staff or Chief Abel as to what our process is to, to swear in or recognize an interim director, but we'll, we'll make sure we follow that guidance. We, we actually have that ready, so. Okay. Our okay. unit was on top of that. Um, anticipate that something may happen this evening, we be ready for that. Okay. All right, well, thank you then. Proceeding on the agenda. Okay. <clears throat> so it looks like under new business too, we have a schedule of budget work sessions for board and staff and budget committees. Is that anything you want to discuss there from staff as far as timing? Well, there's so also a new business item for Western Lane. To yes, I've got that on after this oh, item okay. on my agenda. Oh, I had it the other way around. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah, I don't have page two, but I've got it on here. Right, so we're going to be into April here pretty 
pretty soon and then shortly thereafter May. So this was just to get a discussion going. I believe that the budget committee gave the board's direction to have some board and staff meetings prior to the budget committee meetings. And therefore, I thought it would be a good idea to look at the calendar for both the boards to look at your calendar and come up with some suggestions to have some work sessions in April before the budget goes to the budget committee in May. I guess I would ask both boards uh, recognizing some of the professional uh, commitments, and I think specifically of Director Carnahan, is there an opportunity for a Saturday work session? Yes. So I work with okay with me. Yeah. <clears throat> you find, I guess, um, another question is, is May, should we should we be having a budget committee meeting in April? I know last year we were May and June, but it was really tight to get it done. Right, and last year there was the workshop in April, mm -hmm. and we were, that was more of a presentation and we didn't have the numbers yet, but we were not planning on doing that this year. We were planning on just coming to the budget committee with the numbers and not doing a PowerPoint presentation on all of the operations. Okay. So in a perfect world, I would love to have the budget done by the end of April and have budget committee meetings going already. There's a lot of formatting to do, especially with these I won't have these supplemental budgets and these transfers. I mean, I can I can put some of this historical numbers in, and that can also come later. So I mean, we can we can work with that. We can maybe come with a draft earlier, and knowing that some of the historical numbers will fit into place once all the transfers are done, and, and that can be updated. Okay. Yeah, I understand. I kind of slipped my mind to get all this work. You got to get done. Yeah. A lot for me. March and April. Um, would an early May budget committee meeting and then an early June Usually meeting? we so try to aim for the first week of May for okay. the first budget committee okay. meeting. Okay. Are you calling for a workshop in April. April? In April. Right. And would that be a joint or is that? Not necessarily because those would oh. be the two operational budgets. Because so I would suggest yeah. separate work sessions. I think that was fine. Okay. Any, oh. any other feedback? Larry? I'm uh, just going to say that uh, is, are, we, are we looking at April schedules at this point, or are we just talking about progress? April for work sessions. Okay, what date do you have? So I think the suggestion was to meet on a Saturday. How about the 13th? Uh, you want to pull the board later? Can you do a pull we can. Or we can. Yeah. 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 I'm not. I'm not real sure. Whether, I mean, I don't think it's a problem. I think you're right. I'd have to check up calendars of work. Right. Why don't I pick a few options and send emails out for both boards? Thirteenth is the banquet. Is that? <laughs> oh, that's correct. That's our um, awards banquet. You can wear your costumes to the work session. <laughs> <laughs> Both operations chiefs are committed to that day for classes and other. So doing a poll by email then for each one? Yes. Is Saturday the only option or would a weeknight be in those options as well? I think we can. For example, like the, the second yeah. Wednesday. Weeknight would be better for me. Okay. Excuse me? Weeknight would be better for me. Weeknight? Okay. Let's look at that. All right. Yeah. Very good. Think, anything from the Western Lane Board? Uh, nights or whatever works for the majority is okay. Okay. I'm open. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll we'll poll for for dates then. Okay. So. Do you have the dates already for May and for? Not yet. Okay. I can put that out as well. We can work Just on so the yeah. so the sooner we can get those dates set. Okay, and for uh, on the Western Lane side, we are happy to be able to look at appointing two budget committee members. Uh, Joel Marks and RJ Pilcher are both uh, uh, 
submitted their applications, both qualified individuals from the applications, and I believe Mr. Pilcher is here today. If you want to raise your hand, RJ, good to see you here. Um, so we have two, as my understand, two openings. We have two applications. Um, discussion. I think a motion to appoint both Joel Marks and R.J. Pilcher to the West Wayne Ambulance District Budget Committee. And I'll second that. So first and second. Any discussion? <clears throat> we'll call, please. Director Yesney? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Director Webb? Yes. Director Farnsworth? Yes. Director Russell? Yes. And Director Childs? Yes. I would like to add one thing. There are two terms. One term is a one is a two-year term, and one is a three-year term. Do you want to establish who has the two-year and the three-year? Uh, so they didn't apply for specific terms, then, right? Yeah. So, um, so the train's coming. I'm going to draft RJ for the three-year term. <laughs> and my and motion, you want, you I'll want my to motion to include him for the three-year term. And Joel March and Joel March for the two-year term. Okay, that's an amendment to your prior uh, motion. Cindy, would you accept I that? Second. Okay, first and second again. Let's just do roll call one more time, please. All right, Director Yesney? Yes. Director Webb? Yes. Director Farnsworth? Yes. Director Russell? Yes. And Director Childs? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a part of the meeting where we've got an opportunity for directors to address anything that's not on the agenda. And I would like to ask that the current Sayusla Valley Fire and Rescue Budget Committee Chair, John Murphy. Yes. Did you have a question or a comment? Just, just a comment. Like Dean has said, we kind of got pushed for time last year. It would be nice, and I'm on the Western Lanes Budget Committee also. It would be nice if we could get the budget book, say, a week ahead of the first meeting. That way, the budget committee members could review it. If they have questions, we can ask them when the chief is presenting his budget message. And if they aren't prepared for those answers, they could have them for the next real first budget committee meeting. It might save us a lot of time in the process. Thanks, John. Uh, anything else from our board that you'd like to bring up that is not on the agenda tonight? Anything from Western Lane Board? No. I had a chance to go to budget, um, what was that? Budget was law. Budget law. And I would never want to have Dina's job. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't believe the amount of paperwork that they have to do to do a budget. It's just phenomenal. And to think Dina walked into the middle of it last year and what a great job she did with presenting it to us last year and what she's doing this year. The whole office staff is just I think doing a great job and my hands off too because I wouldn't move. <laughs> <laughs> it's just if you guys ever have a chance to go and see what the state requires of them, you know, the, the, the just the number of forms you have to fill out to prove everything. It's just amazing. Well said. <coughs> I will second her commendation of the whole admin staff. Well done. Director yeah. Disney, there was something on our end. I didn't catch Director Carnahan. So. Well, I just, I think we need to acknowledge that Woody has been on the board for an extended yeah, period of time. I mean, and we probably a letter thank you or accommodation as such. It's a show of appreciation. Yeah, he certainly has served uh, the districts well. Yeah, so we appreciate the commitments made. So I agree. I think we can fashion a, a, a letter of some form, of some sort. To the end, so. We do welcome the new chief. We do welcome the new chief. Yeah. <laughs> 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 May I just start my clarification at the end of the meeting that you were going to sign the employment agreement? Yes. Do we need to, since um, Woody has resigned from his position on the Fura, uh, do we need to appoint someone to that? It, it, it's not on the Fura. 
I'm sorry. I'm sorry, not up here. Yeah, on the uh, as a representative of, of our district. No, I think you're represented by John Scott. Yeah. Yes. Oh, still. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But I believe that his term is expiring. I have no idea on that. Okay. We will want to check into that. I think it's appropriate that we still have a voice on behalf of both districts as best we can. So. All right. Hello, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Should we? Well, just to that, I guess that we've, we've already finalized this, but the next meeting is mm -hmm. April 25th. April 25th. My meeting here at 6 p.m. All right. Be there, be squared. Yeah. Well, it's adjourned. Ready? Adjourned.